I think Night of the Living Dead was important in 1968 for really two reasons. One, just for what it represented to independent filmmakers, really showing that you could make a feature film outside of the Hollywood system or outside of New York. Um, really regional filmmaking hadn't existed uh, before this point at a, at a feature film level. So for that reason alone, that demonstration that perhaps you too could do this, I think is one of the key things that uh, Night of the Living Dead will always be remembered for. But certainly as a horror film, the fact that 50 years later we're still talking about it, there's, there's much more going on. To me, I find that one of the hallmarks of Night of the Living Dead that makes it memorable is the fact that not unlike many films of the time, that by the end, whatever the menace, be it you know, aliens from space or a giant you know, insect, um, is defeated at the end of the film. And Night of the Living Dead, we're pretty much led to believe that the posse has things under control and everything's going to be okay. But our hero, who had survived through the night despite all odds, um, does not, and not at the hands of the undead ghouls that have been attacking, but as a result of the posse who are theoretically there to save him. And that, that punch in the gut, um, is a bold move, not a commercial move uh, from a filmmaking standpoint and probably the number one reason why I think Night of the Living Dead still holds up to this day, because that powerful uh, way in which the audience leaves the theater or you know, ends the, the screening of the film, um, you can't help but think about it. George took the conflict of the monster and created it, changed it, to be more of people we know. We used to be scared by these monsters, these creations, uh, stuff from outer space, but we were never afraid by people that used to be our neighbors, our friends, our loved ones. So George took that concept and really stripped it down and made it about humanity. Um, George's conflict in Night of the Living Dead is basically a living versus living rather than a living versus dead scenario because Ben and Harry Cooper are antagonizing each other more than the dead are and they can't seem to get along. So with that type of struggle, that's what makes Night of the Living Dead effective because it doesn't pit you just against the living versus the dead. It's the living versus the living. And sometimes the living characters are the monsters more so than the living dead or the zombies or anything else because they're the scariest ones which is why you know ben and, and harry just can't get along they can't put aside their differences because they both want to be right and that type of storytelling is what george focused on uh in his films and i felt that that's what helped make it successful you know, back in 1968, the film was certainly successful right out of the gate, but it wasn't a cultural landmark right off the bat. It didn't make that kind of splash initially. I remember having conversations with George where he said, you know, it came out, it did the business in the drive throughs they were, you know, hoping for, and it returned money to the investors right away, but it kind of died off after that. You know, it did its business and kind of went away. And then there was the whole snafu with the copyright being lopped off the film and it going into public domain and, you know, everybody and their brother could get a 60 millimeter print of it and show it in a theater and then later it could get distributed on video by countless different distributors. But it, it didn't really kind of pick up its cultural significance until I really would say about the mid-1970s when it got rediscovered in a publication called Cahiers du Cinema out in, uh, in France. 
and it took a really hard, critical look at the film, and re, you know, it was the, really the first one to kind of un, you know, understand that Night of the Living Dead was really a landmark. It was, it was such a reflection of the time in which it was made, and it had a lot of really progressive and very interesting things to say underneath the sort of story about, you know, the you know, zombies coming back from the dead, and you know, underneath all that violence that George Romero and those guys really had something to say. So it wasn't really until several years after that the film became, oh, that's an important film. I mean, it made a splash when it initially came out. You know, the critics noted, some critics noted it, and they noted that the, you know, the violence with the, you know, the zombies eating the people, and then, of course, the, the fact that, you know, a black man was the lead in the film. There, there were certainly things that were noted about it at the time, but it wasn't until some time later, I would say a good probably six or seven years, that the film became Night of the Living Dead, this important horror film and its impact over the last 50 years has just gone up and up and up to the point now where the genre just wouldn't exist. The genre that we know today, the horror genre that we know today would not exist without Night of the Living Dead. And not just in terms of the zombies, in terms of the social commentary, in terms of the, the, the way that the film was made and put together. I mean, it changed so many different facets of cinema. Uh, and it's, I think George in particular was always sort of he, I, I don't necessarily think he poo-pooed the idea or he kind of brushed it off, but I don't think even, even up until, you know, shortly before he passed away, I don't know if he was ever really fully able to grasp just how much this film had become a part of pop culture and cinema itself. It transcend, it, it's one of those things where the movie transcended itself. And you can't plan for that. These were just a bunch of guys who wanted to go make a movie and they wanted to do the best possible job they could and they wanted it to get seen by as many people as possible. And then they put their baby out there in the world and look what happens. You know, it's, uh, that's not something that you could ever design. It was never something that they could have predicted, but it happened. Night of Living Dead is an example of independent filmmaking at its best. It was a group of people who were already working in film, just not in feature films or Hollywood films or what we think of film. They were working in commercial, local, and industrials. But they had the equipment, they had the knowledge, and they decided to work together, pool their resources, and make a feature film. And that's what independent filmmaking is all about. It's grassroots, it's getting the community involved, it's reaching out to all the people you know that can help along the way. And it's a great example of that. Uh, another thing that's important about Night of the Living Dead, it takes something that had been almost forgotten and gives it new life. Not really, no pun intended there, but the, the fact that uh, Romero and Russo decided to go with zombies because it was something that you hadn't seen in a long time. Uh, they were a voodoo metaphor. They were something you saw in, in films like White Zombie with uh, Bela Lugosi where they were just mindless masses that could be controlled. Um, what they ended up doing, what Russo and Romero ended up doing was creating a whole new mythos with what a zombie could be and it's it's one of the things that makes this not just the first example of modern zombies, but it's a modern horror film in many ways. The, all of the things that have come since, uh, Resident Evil, Walking Dead, all of them stem from this version of the zombie. So Night of the Living Dead is, is integral in creating that creature that we now know as the zombie. It's important today because we have um, a lot of uh, filmmakers who have been influenced by that film, you know, even filmmakers who were around in, in the 60s and the 70s. And I think every decade you'll have a bunch of filmmakers who draw inspiration from Night of the Living Dead for sure. George Romero's influence on filmmaking is huge. Um, again, from the standpoint of helping shepherd in this notion of regional filmmaking, that you know, you too could make a feature film being outside of the system, um, is something that I don't think 
he's widely recognized for. However, I think a lot of filmmakers and budding filmmakers, you know, student filmmakers at the time in, in the late 60s and early 70s, as they saw Night of the Living Dead, I think they recognized that. And, uh, and that's, that's huge. Um, in terms of his influence on horror films, you know, you only need look as far as the imitators and the followers that have um, kind of mimicked his work. The fact that, you know, zombies have entered the kind of lexicon as they have, where people who don't watch horror films and don't like zombies will watch something like The Walking Dead because it's, it's commercially uh, accessible. It's something that is now accepted, um, which is amazing to those of us who have been fans of it for so many years, because uh, we remember the times when not only was it not socially acceptable, it was reviled and uh, you couldn't get his films released. Um, so it's, it's quite a change in, in that respect. And then again, also from a influence on other filmmakers standpoint, um, even filmmakers that didn't, you know, kind of try and emulate what George was doing, um, saw the opportunity to, you know, make regional independent horror films and have great success with them. And uh, it's, it's hard to imagine what the horror landscape would look like today without George Romero. Um, and really everyone involved in Night of the Living Dead, but certainly George kind of continued to carry the torch beyond the first film. Well, George stayed outside the system pretty much his whole life. Um, and I think he did that because he didn't want to compromise his vision of story to fit someone else's needs. Um, you know, George pretty much made the films that he wanted to make and how he wanted to make them. And you can see that reflected in every one of his films. He has a story to tell. Each film has some underlying theme or context that makes it stand out. With the horror genre, he just did something simple. He didn't try to recreate the horror genre. He didn't set out to make zombies scary. He didn't set out to make, um, you know, monkeys a terrifying creature in terms of monkey shines. He just went out and made film. Uh, I was at a Q&A with George once, and someone asked him about being an up-and-coming filmmaker and what advice they have to, to, to get started. And George's answer is very simple. He said, just go make the movie. And that's what George did. He was a director, he was a writer, he was an editor, and that's all he wanted to do. He didn't want to have to deal with studios or business plans or anything like that. And I think that's that approach, that model sometimes gets lost. And I think when people look at George and what he did with what he had, and we're still talking about Night of the Living Dead 50 years later, I think it's a model that still works. You know, George Romero's work, I, even now, I mean, he, he passed away not too long ago, and I had a connection to him as a friend, uh, as, a, as a good friend to him and his wife, and uh, I got to know so many of the people that he worked with over the years. I mean, I, I've had a, a very interesting transition that I was a fan, uh, you know, a follower. I got to meet him, I got to work with him, and then through that I became a friend of his, so it's been an interesting evolution for me. So to judge him strictly as a filmmaker is a little difficult because I got to know the man so well, which was a blessing. It was just, again, not something that I could have ever planned for, but it just sort of happened. So to separate the man from the work is a little difficult at this point. And I think it's going to be interesting to see over the next 10 to 20 years the critical you know, sort of the critical reappraisal of his, of his work. Because everyone knows Night of the Living Dead and his zombie films, but a lot of his other films aren't really talked about. And... I think with Night of the Living Dead, obviously you can't help but note the landmark nature of that work, what that did for horror films, what that has continued to be, it's sort of like a shining beacon for independent cinema. Because what George and you know the guys from the Latent Image did and all their investors and all their cast and crew, they pretty much just got together and said, we want to go do this movie. And we're not going to rely on anyone else to give us an opportunity, we're gonna go make our own opportunity. And that 
was something that George really carried through throughout his entire life. I mean, he worked with the Hollywood studios to a point, but he found his greatest success, both artistically and financially, doing it his way. And there were times where he could have just easily cashed it in and said, nah, I'd say, I'll, just, I'll just ride the Hollywood gravy train and use my name for whatever they, you know, I can and just you know, bank whatever money I can, but he never did that. And I think that is going to end up being a huge example for a lot of independent filmmakers coming up to follow because he may not have made as many films as he wanted to make in his lifetime, but each and every film he made was something that meant something to him. Whether it was something that he wanted to do because of the creative expression and the ideas of it and the, uh, being able to experiment with certain camera moves and certain lighting techniques and getting to work with actors and do something fun like Creepshow or something where there was a, a story and a, and a social commentary that meant something to him very personally and, and like something like A Dawn of the Dead or Martin or Knight Riders which I mean, Knight Riders in particular is like a metaphor for the Pittsburgh filmmaking industry at that time. And these are a lot, a lot of these films aren't as well known as, you know, obviously his dead movies. And I think that he is maybe the preeminent independent filmmaker of our time because he really was that guy throughout his entire career. Again, he made studio films, quote unquote studio films, but they were films he wanted to do. He didn't just, you know, go, Hey George, uh, you want to spend nine months making you know such and such movie? Ah, sure, why not? I got nothing better to do. He would rather not do it than do something that he didn't have some sort of an intellectual or you know emotional investment in. And to keep that up over the length of his entire career is something that I don't know if anyone else has ever really done that. At some point, you always sell out, and it never seems like he did. And I, I, I admire that of, about him so much. And I think so many other filmmakers have taken an enormous amount of, uh, of influence and inspiration from him for those very reasons. How do I feel George Romero has influenced movies, et cetera? Well, I mean, especially independent filmmakers such as myself. I mean, Day of the Dead, uh, Dawn of the Dead. I mean, I love all of those uh, classic zombie films. You know, a lot of people do zombie films. A lot of people um, do that. Uh, but in reality, I think it's better if you want to pay homage to George to do something unique and different. That's something I learned a couple of years back, uh, maybe about a decade or so ago, is to do your do your own things. I was influenced by George. I did a zombie film. It was called The Daily Came Back. It's a short 23-minute film. And so it just comes to be an example of how um, George Romero has created um, this love for the genre and, and, you know, people wanting to have their own take on on the zombie lore and mythology and whatnot so so i i, I think that's great you know um horror genre wise he has george romero has um just influenced so many avenues of horror i mean yeah it started with you know zombies but even martin you know in the 70s with that you know i mean that was a vampire or a supposed vampire you know, serial killer uh, film where John Amplis's character Martin believes that uh, he's a vampire because he loves blood. So, you know, there's so many influences as far as George Romero and what he has brought to the horror genre. And you know, it's sad to see him have passed uh, last year, but you know, his led you know legend of George lives on. You know, the the movies will continue. Another thing that is very important and unique about Night of the Living Dead, more so today, 50 years later than it was then, uh, is the community that it has created. Uh, while there is that core of the people who were there who were involved, the people who, everyone from uh, Russo and Romero, the Shriners, uh, Carl Hardman, Marilyn Eastman, all of them, and that community that sprouted around them to make the film, the the people that they, their contacts that they reached out to for extra resources, the people of Evan City and Pittsburgh who agreed to come out one day and to help them make this film, those who uh, were extras who played zombies or who were posse members. Um, that core community uh, over the decades has expanded outward and there's layers beyond them now to, to the point that today we have the ability to to meet every year 
at the town that the film was created in, in Evans City, to celebrate the film together. And people from all over the world come. Uh, people who have met online, people who have shared their stories in books and articles and magazines and videos online, documentary people, all of them kind of come together at this location. Um, the fact that that has created its own community is very unique and individual to this movie. Not many films can say that they built a culture around them. When we hit these mile marks, like 50 years, when you see something like a Criterion Collection coming out or screenings of a 4K cut in uh, the MoMA in New York City, in uh, film festivals across the country, uh, it makes people rethink the film and give it another viewing and that creates another layer of fan base as well so that's a very important thing that is so unique to Night of the Living Dead that I can't think of any other film that has quite that impact that is lasting and grows exponentially so at 50 years now I think we're just starting to see how we're going to celebrate this film together in the future and it will just get bigger from here. Mm -hmm.